How do you get people to book with you as a photographer when no one has actually booked with you? It's kind of this catch 22, right? And it's a very common question. So if you're sitting there wondering, thinking, I feel like I need clients to get clients, you're not the only one and I have a solution for you today. So today I'm gonna to break down three possible reasons why you're not getting booked as a photographer and how you can fix them. If you're new here, I'm Joy and I help photographers step into the role of photo boss so that they can build a photography business that actually pays them. I am super excited that you're here. Let's dive into the first reason people might not be booking you. Problem number one, nobody knows about you. Raise your hand if you feel like this might be the problem you're currently facing as a photographer. Well, this is actually a visibility and awareness problem. And when you first start out, nobody knows that you're a photographer and they're probably not gonna just magically find out, right? So it's our job as the photographer to talk about ourselves consistently and share about what we do online. Now, I think people overcomplicate this so much and they try to throw money at, you know, maybe advertising dollars or Facebook, when really you have to start simply by pulling out a sheet of paper get yourself a monthly calendar and write down when you're going to share on what platforms and how you're going to share with the world that you're a photographer. Now you might say, I don't have a big audience. I don't have a big reach. That's actually okay because your current friends and family are probably your warmest leads right now and are your most likely first clients. I know for me that they were for both portrait, family clients, babies when I was photographing babies, and weddings. They were all people who knew me or at least knew me through one other person. And that's gonna be huge for you. So take out your calendar, decide what platforms you're gonna post on, and decide when you're gonna post. It's really that simple. Now, if you are overwhelmed by all the platforms, start with at least Instagram and Facebook. These are places that you absolutely have to be as a photographer because they're very visual and it's because people use them. That's where your ideal clients are. If you're wondering how to use Instagram, I have an entire video, actually two videos, about how to leverage Instagram as a photographer to actually get paying clients. So save that, watch that after this video. I'm definitely gonna link it down below for you guys and I'll put it up here in the cards as well because that's really gonna help demystify this whole idea of talking about what you do and making sure that people know that you're a photographer. So problem number two is that nobody trusts you yet, which is fair. You just started out, you're totally unproven. Now, how do we fix this? There are a lot of ways to gain trust and build your almost like credibility online, which is exactly what we're gonna do here. There are two ways I want you to start to build trust with your potential clients so that people can invest in you as a photographer. The first is that you have to be building out your portfolio. People need to be able to see what are they gonna get when they work with you. So your work needs to be good, it needs to be consistent, it needs to be easy to find. So building out your portfolio, even if this is free shoots, and it should be free shoots at first, is a fantastic way to do this. Now, the second thing we need to be leveraging is testimonials and reviews because we can speak confidently about our businesses all day long and we should be, right? But there's nothing quite like somebody else saying, hey, this is an amazing photographer. This is what my experience was like working with them and here's why you should trust them. So reviews are going to elevate your level of trustability very, very quickly online. Now you might be thinking, I kind of need clients in order to get reviews, which isn't necessarily true. As you're building your portfolio, which you might be doing for free, ask your clients, even if those are non-paying clients, to leave you a review if they honestly appreciated your services. So when I was building out my portfolio, I would ask people to model for me, ask people to get back into their wedding attire for me or graduation was happening. I would say, can I take your senior photos again? I'm gonna give you free photos and if you liked them and if you liked working with me, please tag me and leave me a review. This is a fantastic way to build trust and get past that hurdle and that objection when you're first starting out. Problem number three, your brand or the lack thereof is confusing and inconsistent. Now, one of my favorite authors, Donald Miller says, if you confuse, you lose. And this is just a really great statement that has always stuck with me. It's very concise, it's easy to remember, which is in alignment with his brand because he's all about clarity and being memorable. And it's true. 
if you confuse your potential clients as to what kind of photography you offer, where you're based, how they can get in touch with you, what your prices are, if you make it too difficult, they're probably gonna move on because people don't have this really natural curiosity to figure out exactly what you're doing in your life. They're very self-focused. So your website, your blog, and your social media, they are very truly like your digital storefront to your business. And so we want your clients to walk up to this storefront and not have to wonder like, what is this place? Is it a shoe store? Is it a health food store? Can I buy candles here? No, it needs to be so clear what you do, who you serve, and why you serve them from the get-go. Now, yes, this has something to do with your colors and your fonts and your consistency in a visual element, but it goes beyond that, and it's also about your messaging and your story as a brand. So as you're thinking about your brand and you're cleaning things up, making sure that it's very clear what you do, who you help, who you serve, where you serve them, and how people can get in touch with you, and you're thinking about all of this, if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into this topic, I actually have a whole free guide about this called Six Ways to Attract Clients in your first year of photography. You can get that down below and it's gonna go even more in depth into ways to build trust, ways to get those first clients when you don't have any clients, and how to refine your brand and make sure that your brand is strong. I'm also gonna link a couple videos down below that talk just about brand by itself because that's its own conversation. So if you haven't done the work to really dive into cultivating your brand, that's a great next step for you. So I'm gonna link that down below. So today we covered three reasons why you're not booking and how to fix them. If any of these resonated with you, let me know which one down below. I wanna keep the conversation going and maybe you have a different problem and I can help you with that too. So go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and I'll see you guys next week. Bye guys.